Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now to give him all the thanks right now, to give him all the praise right now, and to give him all the glory. We're serving an awesome God. We're serving a mighty God. We're serving a powerful God. We're serving an amazing God. We serve a God who is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. We serve a God who still sits on the throne, who still performs miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the hidden business. He is still in the blessing business. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good and he is so worthy. Yes, he is. I said he is so worthy to be praised. Every day is a day to thank him for what he has done for every last one of us. Every last one of us are in debt with him. He don't owe you nothing, my sisters. He don't owe you anything, my brothers. As some of y'all think that Jesus owes you something. He does not. He paid the ultimate price for every last one of us. He died on that cross for every last one of our sins. He took that beating for every last one of us. He got humiliated for every last one of us. He got crucified for every last one of us. Look at all the pain and the suffering that he had to go through. He did it for you, my sisters. He did it for you, my brothers. So how in the world did you still expect for the Lord to owe you something? He don't owe you nothing. Our job is to thank him and praise him because you're in love with him. Not because you want something. Not because you're in need of anything. Because you're in love with Jesus. And you will always, I say always, put him in first place. Because that's where he belongs. Nothing or anything should ever come before the Lord. Nothing at all. If you put anything before Jesus, there's no way in the world that you love him. And if you have not, if you have not welcomed Jesus into your home today, to your life today, or your prayer closet room today, and if you don't have a personal relationship today, I want to encourage you right now today. Please do so. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we just come before you right now today, peacefully and humbly right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Give me all thanks, give me all praise, give me all glory. We just thank you, Father God, for who you are, what you've done, and what you're about to do. We thank you, Father God, because today is the day that you have made. And we are so glad, hallelujah. We are so glad to be a part of it and rejoice in it. We just thank you, Father God, for your grace and your mercy today, Father God. We just thank you, Father God, because we know that you're about to show up. We know that you're about to show out. Oh, Father God, we know that you're about to do some amazing things in our life, God. Oh, God, we know, Father God, that you're about to talk to somebody today, God. You're about to touch somebody today, God. Oh, Heavenly Father God, we thank you for this word that we're about to receive. We thank you, Father God, for this powerful message today. It's going to keep us full today, keep us satisfied today. There's no place that I'd rather be at right now today, Jesus, but right here in your house, right here in your sanctuary, Father God. Just thank you and praise you and glorify and magnify your holy name right now today, Father God. Oh, Heavenly Father God, you are everything, Father God. We can't do it. We can't make it without you, Father God. Oh, Father God, we glorify, we magnify, we shout out your holy name today, Father God, in your house today, Father God, in your presence right now today, Father God. Oh, Father God, let your will be done today, Father God. Let your words go out, and it should not return back void today, Father God. Oh, Father God. You are so worthy. You are so worthy to be praised, Father God. I don't know why I'd be up today, Jesus, if it weren't for you, Jesus. So I count on you. I depend on you. I rely on you each and every day, Father God. Oh, Father God, allow your presence to move through this place. Allow your love to move through this place. Allow your angels to join us in praise and worship today, Father God, in your place as we magnify, as we exalt your holy name today, Father God, in your place, Father God. Oh, Father God, let it rain down on us today, Father God, with your words and your promises, Father God. Oh, Father God, you know exactly what your sons and your daughters are going through, what we are facing right now today, Father God. Oh, Father God, I'm just asking you in your name right now today, Father God, to touch us right now, to heal us right now today, Father God, to come through, Father God, to do something like you never done before today, Father God. Oh, Father God, I just glorify and I magnify your name and your, and your place today, Father God. Oh, Father God, I know how faithful you are, God, that you'll never leave us, that you'll never forsake us, God, that you'll never turn your back on us, God. Oh, Father God, that you'll never fail us, Father God, that, that, that you will always be there for us, Father God. Oh, Father God, we just thank you right now today, Father God. Oh, Heavenly Father God, this is your house. This is your house, the house that you built on solid ground, the house that you built on solid foundation, the house that cannot be moved, shaken, or bought, Father God. Glory be to God. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Heavenly Father, God, Abba, Father, you are welcome right now today to enter to your home right now, right here in your sanctuary right now, right here on your YouTube channel right now, right here on your platform right now, right here in my sister's homes and my sister's life, right here in my brother's homes and my brother's life. Father God, I'm asking you, Father God, to do a new thing in my brother's and my sister's life right now. I'm asking you, Father God, to touch us right now. I'm asking you to uplift us right now. I'm asking you, Father God, to speak a word to us right now. I'm asking you, Father God, to soften our heart right now today, Father God. Oh, Father God, I want to let you know that you have full control of my sisters, that you have full control of my brothers, that you have full control of myself, God. Oh, God, we can't do it no more, God. We surrender everything to you right now today, Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, glory be to God. Holy Spirit, you are welcome right now. You're invited right now today to enter to your home right now, right here in your sanctuary right now, right here on your YouTube channel, your platform, right here in my brother's homes and my brother's life, right here in my sister's homes and my sister's life. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to intercede and intervene right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to comfort us right now because you are our comforter. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to quiet our thoughts, quiet our mind right now so we can hear everything from you today. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, if there's something that's wrong, there's something, if there's something that we need to be aware of, Holy Spirit, please reveal it to us right now today, Holy Spirit. Father God, please do not allow our enemies to shame us, Father God, or to make us look, or make us look dumbfounded, Father God, but help us in that area, Father God. Oh, Father God, we just thank you, Father God, for who you are, Father God, what you've done, what you're about to do in this place and our life right now today, Father God. Oh, Father God, we give everything to you today, Father God, because God, we know that you can handle our situation better than we can, Father Father God. Heavenly Father God, please forgive us for our sin, known and unknown right now. Wash us through your blood right now. Clean us up as white as snow right now. Father God, I want to say thank you right now today for forgiving us for our sin. Thank you, Father God, for not remembering our sins anymore. Thank you, Father God, for the clean slate. Thank you, Father God, for the opportunity. Thank you, Father God, for the second chance. Thank you, Father God, for coming through, Father God. Oh, glory be to God. Father God, words cannot explain how thankful, how grateful, how honor, how blessed I am to pray. Praise and have fellowship with all my brothers, all my sisters today, Father God, in your house today, Father God, as one body in Christ today. Father God, we're here today to let you know that we're available for praise, that we're available for service, that we're available for the kingdom, but most of all, Jesus, that we are available for you. Father God, before I get started, it's something that's always in my mind about you. It's something that stays in my spirit about you. It's something that stays in the fruit of my tongue and the fruit of my lips about you. And I just got to tell you how I really feel about you, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, 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 Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I magnify and shout out your holy name the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I put my heart out to you every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I shout out your holy name the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I do. I am, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I pray. That's why I boast about you. That's why I talk about you all day long, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. I just 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 can't thank you enough. Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen. And let Jesus know right now today. Let him know right now today that you can't thank him, that you can't thank him enough. I'm going to keep it real with you, my brothers and sisters. I ain't here to sugarcoat anything. Repentance is an everyday thing. Because every last one of us, we sin. Every last one of us, we drop the ball. Every last one of us, we fall short of God's grace and mercy each and every day. Every last one of us. Now, if you go into a church and your preacher or pastor, whatever you want to call yourself, not talking about repentance, you might want to change churches. But what get me with some of y'all, some of y'all cause so much chaos, cause so much hell, cause so much trouble from Monday through Saturday. But on Sunday, you want to run down and tear down the church door. Oh, I got to go to church today. Oh, I got to hear the word today. Some of y'all cause so much trouble. Some of y'all have so much malice and envy and hatred and jealousy in your heart. Then on Sunday, you want to run to church. Some of y'all cause trouble all week long. But on Sundays, you want to go to church. Let me stop you real quick because I hear a lot of people say, Oh, whenever you're in trouble, you got to go to church. Oh, when something's going wrong, you got to go to church. 
church has to be in your heart. Number one uno. If church is not in your heart, going to that church building on Sundays is not going to help you. It's not going to save you. It's not going to do you no good. And the reason why I'm saying that because the moment that you hear the word, the moment you all are praising and worship, the moment that the church doors are closed, you got that same envy, you still got that same jealousy, you still got that same malice, you still got that same hatred still in your heart. And what you just learned in that church that day, the enemy is already no snatch, grabbing and ticket. So why in the world are you going to the church building? It don't make sense to me. Because that's the first thing I hear. I got to go to church. I hear, I see people all day long. I'm not judging anybody. You do all that cussing. You got the most nastiest, nastiest attitude. You're jealous of people because you want nobody to have more than you. You got hatred all in your spirit. But you want to talk all about this spiritual quotes. You want to talk about God this and God that. But church is not in your heart. Because God is a God of love. He don't have hate in his heart. He don't have jealousy in his heart. He don't have malice in his heart. He don't keep up trouble. He don't cause confusion. He don't live in sin at all. But I hear people say all the time, oh, you might want to go to church. Church is in your heart. Church is, you got, church is a consistent thing. All year round, 365 days out of the year. You can't sit down and do all that dirt Monday through Saturday and go to church one day and say, oh, I praise God today. Oh, God going to do this for me today. What planet are you on? <laughs> what life are you living? You are delusional, my sisters. You are delusional, my brothers. You need some help. You need to go see a physician right now. You need to go see a medical doctor right now and let that doctor to prescribe you on some kind of medicine because you need some medication because that's the first thing I hear. Got to go to church. For what? Did you go Monday? Did you go Tuesday? Did you go Wednesday? Did you go Thursday? Did you go Friday? Did you go Saturday? If you didn't go Monday through Saturday, why are you going on Sunday? Because they ain't going to do you no good. You don't get all your dirt, all your cussing, all your trouble, everything from Monday through Saturday, but you think one day it's going to save you. My sisters, my brothers, there's something wrong with you. It's really something wrong with you. You got to repent for all the dirt that you have done and caused. You got to repent for having malice and envy and hatred in your heart. You got to repent to ask God to remove that jealousy from your heart. You got to repent to ask God to forgive you for the sins that you have done and committed today and every day. You got to repent because you fell short. You got to repent for the wrong thing that you're doing. If you are not repenting and you go to church on Monday of the week and you think you think that's going to help you, you need, a, you need a double dose of medicine right now. I'm going to keep it real. Our job is to help the sinners. Our job is, is to win souls for the kingdom. If your preacher's not trying to win souls for the kingdom, why are you listening? There's something wrong with you too. When I'm on here, I'm on here to win souls for the kingdom. That's what it's all about. Repentance is an everyday thing. When I'm on here, because church is in my heart, it stays in my heart, lives in my heart. You can't have church and have malice in your heart, too. You can't have church and have envy in your heart, too. You can't have church and have jealousy in your heart, too. You can't have church and you're sitting there causing all kind of trouble in your heart. Them two don't work. So it's either you got a church or you got the other. Which one do you have? If you're going to serve God, you got to serve God fully. You know I mean, you got to walk with him fully. It can't be half-time, it can't be part-time, and it sure can't be one day out of the week because that's what some of y'all, that's what y'all are doing, and you want to talk about God. Some of y'all sit down and put all these spiritual quotes all on your social media page, and you wonder why people ain't looking at it. You wonder why people aren't even liking it. It's because they see who you are, because the Word of God says you should know them by their fruit. Yeah, the outside might look good, but the inside, this is nasty, it's rotten to the core. And guess what? People see that and people notice it. So when they see you putting that stuff on social media and nobody liking it, they already know who you are. I'm going to keep it real with you. Some of y'all need to stop doing what you're doing. Because that church building is not going to help you. <clears throat> if you don't have Jesus in your heart fully, if you're not walking with him fully, that building is not going to help you. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that, because at one time, I was just like y'all. 
So I'm not here to judge you. I'm just here to tell you what you need to do to correct your issues. I'm here to help you to correct the problem that you're doing. Because at one point in time, I was just like y'all, causing all kind of trouble. But on Sunday, someone go in there and praise and worship. It won't do me no good going to a building. Because at that time, I didn't have it in my heart for it. But when I made Jesus my priority, when I made praying my priority, when I mean preaching my priority, when I mean meditating with him, my priority. When I mean I want to walk, walk and I drop everything down because I want to walk with him, I made that my priority. Because at that time, church stayed in my heart. And it's always going to stay in my heart. 365 days out of the year, I'm consistent with God. And God is consistent with me. It is simple as that. That's why I say it has to be in your heart. That building is not going to help some of y'all because that's the first thing that some of y'all do is go down that church building, tear down that church building on Sundays. But as soon as church service over with, you that same person again that you was on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Keep it real now. You ain't fooling nobody but yourself. God already know who you are. You ain't fooling nobody but yourself. People see that. Your fruit shows. You cannot live in light and darkness and think that God is with you because God is all light. There's no darkness in him at all. None whatsoever. Did you make it your priority today to repent for the wrong that you've done? Did you forgive someone because you did what you did to that person? Did you forgive? But some of y'all, y'all are spending the other person to forgive y'all when you're the one who did wrong. Come on, somebody. But some of y'all went to church today, praising and worshiping. But the moment that the church doors open, with, you that same person again like you was on Monday through Saturday back over again. Cussing, acting a fool right now. Doing all kind of things that you did Monday through Saturday. But you just went to church today, right? You received the word today, right? And first thing you said, oh, I know that word is for me. Was it for you? What was the word for you on Monday? What was the word for you on Tuesday? What was the word for you on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday? If you ain't had no word from Monday through Saturday, so how the word that works for you today? That don't make sense. They don't even add up. You need some help, my sisters. You need some help, my brothers. Some of y'all need to go to the doctor and, and ask the doctor for a checkup. And tell them why you need a checkup. Don't say, oh, I got stomach aches or I got body aches. Just tell them, it's, I know there's something wrong with me. <clears throat> and he's going to say, what's wrong with you? See, I'm only going to church one day out a week. And I think that's going to help me. But church is not really in my heart. It's time for y'all to be honest. Because you know church is not in your heart. It can't be. When you're doing all that dirty and nasty, evil things Monday through Saturday. It cannot be in your heart when you got malice and envy and jealousy and hatred in your heart. It can't be. It can't be. Let's keep it real now. Ain't no need to fake the funk about it. It's not. That church building is not going to help you when you're still living in darkness. We're still living in sin. We're still doing dirt. We still got envy. We still got malice. We still got jealousy. We still got hatred in your heart. That church building is not going to help you if you're not doing it consistent. You got to do that church thing consistent. Every single day. That means that you got to seek to the, seek the kingdom every day. That cuss word shouldn't even be in your mouth. It shouldn't even be in your spirit. Hatred shouldn't even be in your spirit. Jealousy should be in your spirit. Malice. None of that should be in your spirit. If you still have that in your spirit and you still mean, there's no way in the world that you got a personal relationship with God because there's no angels in heaven are mean. God not even mean. Nobody can make you mean but yourself. But you went to church today, right? Did you go Monday? Did you go Tuesday? Did you go Wednesday? Did you go Thursday, Friday, and Saturday? No, you didn't. No, you didn't. But you went today. And you're still doing the same thing that you did Monday through Saturday, right back over again. What is good going to that building today when the enemy took what you received today? What was the purpose? What was the need? Did you learn anything today? Do you say, God, I know I've been messing up. I know I've not been consistent with you. But today is the day, G, I'm going to repent for all my sins. 
I'm going to repent for having jealousy in my heart and my spirit. I'm going to repent for having malice and envy in my heart and my spirit. I'm going to repent for all the wrong things I did to every anybody. Regardless that person want to forgive me or not, I'm going to be the bigger person and I'm going to ask for forgiveness. Did you do that today? Because that's what this message is about today, about repentance. If you ain't did that today, if your preacher didn't preach on repentance today, there's some wrong with that church because repentance is an everyday thing too. You got to be consistent with that because we all fall short of God's grace and mercy. Every last one of us do. I'm just keeping it real. Amen? Amen. So if you please turn your Bible to Luke 5 and we're going to read verse 31. That's Luke chapter 5 and we're going to read verse 31. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Jesus answered them, it is not the healthy who need a doctor. I'm going to start right there. When Jesus answered them, it is not the healthy who need a doctor. Basically what Jesus said, the healthy people don't need a doctor because why? They are consistent with Jesus. That means they have church in their mind, they have church in their spirit, and they have church in their heart every single day, 365 days out of a year. They repent every day, they pray every day, they praise every day. They don't have no jealousy, they don't have no envy, they don't have no malice, they don't have no hatred in their heart whatsoever. They don't have none of that. They fall short, they make mistakes, but they walk with God each and every day. Consistently. Not, not want to walk with God when trouble comes. Not want to talk to God when they're going through something. But they do this on an everyday, daily basis. That's why they healthy. They ain't got to go to no church building to have time with God. They ain't got to go to no church building and praise and worship and say, Oh, I went to church today. I received the word today. Because they receive the word every single day. They praise and they worship every single day. That's what makes them healthy. That's what make y'all unhealthy. Are you following what I'm saying? Who need a doctor but the sick? I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Mm, 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 mm. It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. The ones who go into that church building every Sunday. But you did all your dirt Monday through Saturday. Y'all don't want that sick. Y'all don't want to need a doctor. Going to that church building is not going to help you unless you can walk with God consistently. Pray with Him consistently. Fast consistently. Serve Him consistently. It got to be consistent. Repentance has to be consistent. If it's not consistent, you need a doctor. You need some help. Did you repent today? Did your pastor, did your reverend, did your bishop, did your elder or your deacon discuss or talk about repenting today as you went down and turned the church building down today? Did they talk about that today? Because I talk about repentance every day because it is an everyday thing. Just like praise is an everyday thing. And worship is an everyday thing. Because why? Because I walk with God every day. I ain't got to go to a church building. To praise and worship God. I do that all day long. 365 days out of the year. Jesus should know your heart. And if your heart is not right. Please I want to encourage you right now today. Please make it right. I'm asking you right now today my sisters. I'm asking you right now today my brothers. Repent. For all the wrong that you've done. Repent and ask God for forgiveness. Repent and ask God to get that jealousy, that envy, that hatred, that meanness, that malice out of your heart and out of your spirit right now today because Jesus has none of that in his heart. How can you walk with Jesus and you have that in your heart? But you went to church today, right? You tore down that building today, right? So why are you talking about God when you got that still in your heart and in your spirit? Because that's not one mean angel. When you go to heaven, it's peacefully. There's nobody in heaven that has jealousy, envy, hatred, malice in their heart whatsoever. But you say that you know God, right? You don't think something wrong with that picture? You don't think something wrong with you? You don't think that you need a doctor? I'm asking you today, my sister and brother, please repent. 
and ask God to help you in that area. Ask God to wash you clean. Ask God to make you over. Because he will. If he did it for me, he'll do it for you. I'm encouraging somebody today. Please repent right now. Amen. Amen. And if you like what you heard, you know that this word is for you. Go and hit Jesus' like button. Hit the subscribe button too as well. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life. To guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. By us praying a simple little prayer that God is already working everything God in my life for another day. And if you ever want to get in contact with me or leave me a comment, my YouTube channel is withers.lt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always praise him. Always keep your eyes focused on Jesus because he is the author and perfecter of your faith. Continue to trust him even though you don't see things happening. Continue to hold on to his unchangeable hands and please do not let it go. Continue to pick up your crosses and follow Jesus. Choose faith over fear. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you're alone. It doesn't matter if you have not seen their face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep y'all in prayer, my brothers and sisters. The only thing that I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up to you. I'm serving with the CLT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' mighty name. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen.